What's up you guys? It's Sarah and today I'm going to be talking about Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I'm so proud of myself for getting through this because like the text is so small and the book is so big there's so many pages like it took effort to get through this book. For those of you who don't know Pillars of the Earth follows a couple different characters. It starts at the beginning with this character named Tom and he is a builder and he builds like cathedrals and churches and houses and Tom gets hired on to build this cathedral for this monastery and one of the main characters his name is Philip he's a monk there and then there's also this girl her name is Elena and she's the main character she is an heiress to a lord. I'm not sure what you call that. She's the daughter of a lord and basically her dad gets, her family gets dethroned and it's just her and her brother and they have to survive on their own and they work their way up and they're trying to survive and reclaim their village and their house and their people. And there's also this boy named Jack. He is Tom the Builder's stepson and he kind of has like this romantic interest in Elena. The story isn't complicated in itself. It mostly follows Tom trying to build his cathedral, Elena trying to rebuild her life, Jack trying to go after Elena, and Philip the monk trying to build his cathedral and oversee everything. But the story is very in-depth and it stretches with a lot of different threads and they all interconnect and tie in together. Ken Follett does a really good job of wrapping everything up and tying them together. So that's part of the reason why it's so long because it goes through a bunch of details that all tie in and it was very good. I would give this a B plus. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought that it was very well done and it's on Oprah's book list. I saw that from the, the sticker right up here. So if that sounds interesting to you and you haven't read it, go read the book and then come back and we can discuss spoilers, okay? Bye people who haven't read the book. Oh, Pillars of the Earth. I really, I did enjoy it, but it was very hard for me to get through just because it was so long. And it's not that it drags, it's just a little slower. And so it took me like forever, like it took me two months to read this book, you guys. I've been working on it for forever. Finally we're done and we can discuss it. Let's talk about the characters. I really, 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 really hate William. Wow. Wow. I have not had an antagonist of a story be so disgustingly vile in a really long time. He was just absolutely like awful and obviously like he's a rapist and he's absolutely terrible. I hated reading from his point of view because he was just so awful, which of course makes like a good character, but ah, uh, William was horrible. Tom the Builder was fine. My only problem with him, and I'm just about to like get up on my soapbox real quick, what the heck is up with authors that write character traits and qualities in men that have them being turned on by the idea of raping someone? What? the actual heck. I'm I'm not gonna swear in my videos because I try to keep it appropriate for everyone but if I could swear I would be swearing right now. As a woman I am disgusted by this and I am not saying that only women can be raped or sexually harassed but of course we are you know the majority and I am absolutely appalled and disgusted by this. And this is not the first book that I've seen this in. There's a passage in this book, it's towards the beginning. It's Tom the Builder thinking about his wife and sleeping with her. And then he thinks about how he's never taken a woman against her will. But the thought of that turns him on. That really irritated me reading this. It's one thing to read a book with the POV of a rapist like William. Obviously it disturbed me reading it, but William is a horrible person. He is a rapist and that is very black and white. With Tom, we're supposed to like Tom and that line I really, really hated and I don't understand why authors, particularly male authors, have this in their books. I don't know if this is a thing in the world. The men that I know in my life are good, not like that, but oh my gosh, I that it disgusted me and I'll get off my soapbox now, but I really disliked that. Otherwise, Tom was fine. Ellen, I started off disliking, but then by the end, I loved her. I love how she cursed the wedding. I love how she always stands by her son's side. I like how she stands up to Tom and she's like, your son Alfred is horrible. Look what he did to Jack. Like, I'm taking my son and I'm leaving you. Like, yes, let's stand up for our children. Like, Ellen was great. I love how she told Jack when he grew up, she was like, honey, you love Elena, you're probably not gonna be into anyone else, like, you might as well just leave town. Like, 
She was so real with him. I loved it. Ellen was a great character by the end. I really, really liked her. I thought Elena was a really strong character. I liked her a lot. Her brother was such a tool, Richard. Oh my gosh. He was so annoying and he always made Elena do all of the work and he just used the crap out of her. Like, oh, Richard was terrible. And of course, I look, I like their relationship and how she, you know, if she doesn't always like her brother, she's always going to take care of him and provide for him and do her best for him. But he just always used her. She always had to run herself ragged so he could just like do nothing. Oh, Richard. Jack was an interesting character because he starts off as a child and you're not really sure about him because there's the whole burning the cathedral down. But then he ends up being like the main character and you really do like him. So it's kind of funny, like this gray, ambiguous character, because at the beginning you're like, he's kind of like a demon-y child, like, whoa, he's pretty dark, like burning this cathedral down and then lying about it and everything. But by the end, you're like, oh, like he really is a good guy and he really does care about Elena and like they deserve to be happy together. So it was really kind of like weird, but it's good because you see, you know, character development and you see a kid grow and when you're younger, Right and wrong, like, it's scary, but the consequences, like, aren't as big, you know? Like, you don't blame the child for murdering someone, you blame the parent. Actually, maybe you do blame the child, then maybe that's a bad example. But the point is, you don't always blame the child for what they do, you blame the parents for not teaching it to them. But I just thought it was really interesting how he just, like, burns the cathedral down and... That was like the only dark side of Jack that we saw. I hated Adam. I thought he was horrible. Again, he wasn't as bad as William. And I did like how he wasn't like completely awful in the beginning. But then we just watch how he like gets worse. Because initially he just like made Elena sleep on the floor and like whatever. But then he like comes back and like is gonna rape her. Like, oh my god, Elena, I just, my heart just goes out to her. Oh my gosh, Philip! When Phil, I love Philip, first of all, and second of all, when he like tries to stop that random woman from being raped and he's like, I am a monk, like you can't do it, because he knows he's not strong enough, so he just tries to pull like the monk card and the guy's just like, <laughs> This book had a lot of very intensely described sex scenes and or rape scenes, which I really could have done without the detail on the rape scenes. Like, you can imply it, you can talk about it a little bit, but it really went into detail, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I love how Jack has red hair because I feel like red-haired characters are so underwritten and not written enough, and when they are written, they're not a very good character. Exceptions, you know, Ron Reasley and stuff. We have good red-headed characters, but they're not that common, and so I really liked how Jack had red hair, and he was such a redhead that the hair on his legs was actually red, like, full on ginger, through and through, and I just, I really liked that, you know, like, ginger representation, even though I don't have red hair, I do like red haired characters. For a while, Philip was my favorite character, I think by the end, it was Elena, but I really did like Philip because he was such, like, a good soul, and I know that towards the end of the book, he, he did some questionable things, like, he made Elena and Jack split up and everything, but... I just, I liked Philip because he was very, like, he was a comforting presence. First of all, he was rational, and he wasn't a rapist, and he didn't have, like, rapist thoughts, Tom. And he was just, like, the first male character in this book that's like, okay, he's not completely sketchy, like, great. But the thing about Philip is that he sees the world very black and white, which I love because, you know, he's a priest, so it kind of makes sense. He's adapted this lifestyle of he knows what he's taught and that is his life, and it's all prayer and monks and work, and he's not super, super exposed to the outside world. And so when you grow up in an environment like that, it makes sense that you have this very right and wrong view of the world, especially, you know, when you believe in a religion that tells you this is right this is wrong. So I liked how Philip did see the world in black and white, but we got to see the different sides of that and how Philip wasn't always right. Like, he probably shouldn't have forced Elena and Jack away from each other, and he even kind of knows, like, I probably shouldn't have done that, but also it aligns with his morals and his teachings, and so he kind of had to. I loved how they did Philip. He was a really, really good character, and just kind of, you know, not perfect, but still a good character, and we can root for him, but he does make mistakes because of the way he is and the way his lifestyle has brought him up to be. William ends up swinging. I also did like how Elena didn't feel much satisfaction from seeing William swing, but it was still, like, nice to know he is dead. We don't have to worry about William anymore because 
man, that man was just so awful. He raids the town and like blocks their an annulment from going through and obviously everything he did to Elena and like these young women. William is awful. I liked the surprise of Jack's dad being the guy that got hung at the beginning because I was waiting like so much to see who that was that was getting hung and hanged? Hung? Hanged? I think it's hanged. And it ended up being Jack's dad, who was a question mark the whole time, so that was good tying in. This book just does a really good job of tying in all the loose ends and the loose strands. The king at the end being like whipped, except it wasn't hard, it was just like a tap of the king. That was really cool. I, did that actually happen in history? I should look that up. That was, that was really cool. Like I said before, I would probably give this book a B plus, probably because I took some points off for the Tom raping, turning him on. I just, I can't get behind that idea. Um, I could have done without like so vivid like sex scenes, like fine. I just, it, it was a lot. It was all the time. And honestly, just because it's not that the book was boring, but it could have been a little like, it could have kept my attention a little bit more. But otherwise, it was really good. The character development is really good. And even though the plot is pretty slow, it's consistent and it goes throughout. And they finally like, you know, they build this cathedral and Elena gets her property and her rights back. And Philip has like Jonathan and it's really well done. I like how they tie everything in. It's a mark of good writing, plant many seeds and have them all grow. And it's just, it was really good in that aspect, but in some of the others I was like, okay, I'm kind of tired of this. I think this is a series I'm not going to continue it just because even though I did enjoy the book looking back, like, yeah, that was a good book. While I was reading it, it wasn't the most enjoyable thing. It was okay. I would say the second half of the book is definitely more enjoyable for me than the first half of the book. But it just, it's not worth my time to read another thousand page book with tiny print. I didn't love it that much. Thank you so much for watching. That's all I got for you this week. I'm sorry for the delay in video. My power went out for a couple days, so I literally could not film or upload for you guys. If you want to follow me on Instagram to get all my latest updates and postings on videos, you can follow me at the underscore writing corner. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm hilarious. You should follow me on Twitter. It's at Sarah M. Caroline and that's Sarah with an H. Don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every Thursday as long as my power is on. And hit that like button if you like this video so I know what you guys like and I can give you more of what you like. Comment below if you liked Pillars of the Earth. If you didn't like Pillars of the Earth, what are your thoughts? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. We're slowly integrating back into society despite, you know, the corona. Our state is starting to reopen. Michigan! represents. And so I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy as they go out and start to open their doors. I will talk to y'all soon. Bye!